Redemptive suffering, according to Wikipedia, is a belief that, quote, human suffering, when accepted and offered up in union with the passion of Jesus, can remit the just punishment for one sins or for the sins of another or for the physical or spiritual needs of oneself or another. However, nothing can be further from the truth, she says. There is no scriptural or catechetical basis for this teaching, none whatsoever. Redemptive suffering is wow. a teaching wow. that says it's okay to be sick, just offer it up. This is not God's way. You can't offer up your sickness for someone else or someone else or or someone else for you. Jesus did that for us. Jesus offered himself up for the punishment of sin. He took the punishment due to us. There is no punishment for those who are in Christ. Discipline, yes, punishment, no. I'm going to read a, I'm, if you give me a minute here, Jess, I'm going to read something. This is from uh, Mystici Corporis on the mystical body of Christ and our union with it, or on the mystical body of Christ and our union with it, with Christ, encyclical letter of Pius the Twelfth. So there's no catechetical foundation for suffering. Two paragraphs, paragraph 44. God wills or Christ wills to be helped by the members of his body in carrying out the work of redemption. It is not because he is indigent and weak, but rather because he has so willed it for the greater glory of his spotless spouse. Dying on the cross, he left to his church the immense treasury of the redemption towards which she contributed nothing. But when those graces come to be distributed, not only does he share this work of sanctification with his church, but he wills that in some way it be due to her action. This is a deep mystery and an inexhaustible subject of meditation. That the sal listen, Pope Pius XII, in, in, uh, that the salvation of many depends on the prayers, voluntary penances, which the members of the mystical body of Jesus Christ offer for this intention and on the cooperation of the pastors of, soul, of souls and of the faithful, especially fathers and mothers of family, in cooperation, which they must offer to our divine Savior as though they were his associates. One more. For although our Savior, this is paragraph 106, although our Savior's cruel passion and death merited for his church an infinite treasure of graces, God's inscrutable prov providence has decreed that these graces should not be granted to us all at once, but their greater or lesser abundance will depend in no small part on our good works, which draw down to souls of men a rain of heavenly gifts freely bestowed. If we set our heart on the good things of eternity, if we restrain our mortal body by voluntary mortification, denying what is forb forbidden, forcing it to do what is hard and distasteful, distasteful, and humbly accept as from God's hands the burdens and sorrows in this present life. According to the apostle, we shall fill up with those things that are wanting in the sufferings of Christ in our flesh for his body, which is the church. So our understanding of an ecclesiology, according this is a book, this is this is a, a, an encyclical by Pius XII. We'll get into Pope John Paul next, but this is an encyclical right. by Pius XII on the church, Jess. This is not a spiritual writing on suffering. You want to be a member of the Church of Christ, suffering and offering suffering up is how graces are distributed. The object of graces that Christ acquired on, on Calvary depends, he says, in no, no small part on our sacrifices and our offerings to distribute those graces. What do you think? She, again, she had, this writer has the complete, this Catholic writer has the complete Protestant view of the body of Christ, of redemption. Because the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14, it says, we share in Christ. So let me develop that. We share in Christ, Hebrews 3, 14. Now follow me. Because Christ is the head and we're his body. We're the hands of the feet and the voice of Christ here on earth. In fact, St. Paul calls us in Ephesians 2, 10. We are God's handiwork. Close quote. So what does God call us to as his handiwork? God calls us to labor in the vineyard for souls. That's why St. Paul calls us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, quote, we are God's fellow workers, fellow workers. In what? In saving souls. How? Look what he says here. What we're working, as people in the mystical body of Christ, what we're working towards is the redemption and salvation of souls. How? Look what St. Paul says here. I have become all things to all men that I might by all means 
save some. I do it for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessing. Close quote. So St. Paul sees himself as a laborer in the vineyard and a co-redeemer in and through Jesus Christ, because whatever good we do, it's it's like it says in Romans eleven thirty six, we do it quote from him and through him and to him are all things. Romans eleven thirty six. And the word co, by the way, in Latin means along with. Therefore, everything we do as Christians to further the message and the saving power of the gospel is along with and subordinate to the head, which is Christ. Yeah, no, let's stay in the scriptures. Let's stay in, in, in St. Paul's understanding, his what would be called Pauline soteriology, right? And and Paul distinguishes, you're, you're fleshing out a distinction that the, the developed theolo theological language to talk about objective versus subjective redemption. Christ objectively secures with the, the co-redemption, co-participation of the Virgin Mary and the objective graces for salvation. But the distribution, this is Pius XII, when it came to the distribution of those graces, he, we are his collaborators. We are his co-operators. We are his co-redeemers. Co like you say, the cum, Latin means with. So, yeah. so uh, Colossians 1.24, Pius XII quotes that, and then John Paul II is going to quote that and start oh, his salvifici dolores with that same verse. Here's what he says. Now, I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake and in my flesh. I'm filling up what is lacking in the affliction of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church. And the normal Protestant argument says, you Catholics try to work your way to salvation. You Catholics are trying to work your way to heaven. Christ said from the cross, it is finished, right? Well, technically, teleosei, the Greek word, consumatum est in Latin. It is consummated. It has been brought to its fulfillment, its completion. Did not the Messiah have to suffer? He says uh, to, the, to the disciples on, on the way of Emmaus. So think about that. And he also says uh, in Colo uh, Philippians 129, for you it has been appointed not only to believe, but to suffer for him, right? Suffering is part of our, it's part of the threefold conditions of discipleship. If you wish to be my disciple, you must deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me. That isn't to deny the fact that gifts are active in the church. God heals, right? Jesus, his very name, God heals, right? Uh, um, so, so he does heal. This is another verse that, that was plaguing for a while until I understood this concept. You went to Romans. Here's another one from Romans. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption through which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness that we are his children. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And I always want to stop at the last half of that verse 16 of Romans 8. And here's what he says, if only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. So, yep. so you know, First Peter 2, 5. Now, you're the Bible guy. I, I'm doing all the Bible verses here, Jeff. I'll, I'll throw it back to you. Make yourselves living, uh, living stones. Let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You know, though this is, this is, this is uh, selective inattention that, that yes, many modernist yes. readers of scripture they pull out and try to proof text scripture to, to 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 build their own we have a developed tradition in the church we have a we have 2000 years of of developed tradition i don't understand why catholics can't look at that tradition and deepen their understanding here's something saint augustine said this is not on suffering but this is this is a warning against against uh, uh subjective reading of scripture this, this is in his uh, uh, um, on Christian doctrine. He says he talks about different people that are going to object to to learning how to read Scripture from the heart of the church. Here's what he says: There is a third class of objectors who either really do understand the Scriptures, or they think they do, or because they they imagine they have attained a certain power of interpreting the sacred books without any, reading any directions of any kind. Um, I, I they will cry out that such rules are not necessary. For anyone, but that everything rightly done towards clearing up the obscurities of Scripture could be better done by unassisted grace of God. So the unassisted grace of God, that God will give us uh, the right interpretation. You just have to read the Scriptures in the Spirit, and you'll be given the right interpretation by God. Augustine's writing in, 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 in you know, the 5th century, doctor of the church, right? And he, he's saying, 
you learn how to read, Please you learn how to speak to someone else. You must learn how to read the scriptures by sitting at the feet of the church. I want to go back to Colossians 124 because that one is uh that verse really basically it, it answers everything uh, about this article. Uh, in Colossians 124, again, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I complete what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church. Now that phrase, what is lacking, that is, what is lacking is the suffering that remains for believers in the trials of life. That's what's lacking, because suffering is a mission for all of the faithful as a mean of conforming ourselves to, God, to Christ. As it says in Romans 8.17 and Philippians 3.10, suffering conforms you to Christ. Romans 8.17, Philippians 3.10. This is what's lacking. So these words could be misunderstood, like, like this author, this female charismatic author. They could be misunderstood to mean that the suffering of Christ was not sufficient. That's what she's actually saying in her article, that some people are actually think that Christ's sufferings are not sufficient for redemption, and that the sufferings of the saints you know, must be added to complete it. But this is, this is a heretical point of view. This is not what we believe. Christ and the church are one mystical person. And so while the merits of Christ are infinite, we know that the saints acquire merit in a limited degree. That's us. So what's lacking, it, it pertains to the afflictions of the entire church, you and I, to which St. Paul adds his own amount. And, 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 and in regards to suffering, suffering, St. Augustine said, what happened to the head will happen to the body. Suffering should be an imitation of God who took suffering upon himself in this life. And, and our pain is the completion of what is lacking, as St. As Paul said, in the sufferings of Christ, because it makes the application of the merits of his passion more effective and more souls can be saved as a result of our sufferings if they're united with those of Jesus Christ. Also, one more, another Pauline soteriology or well, Pauline uh, understanding of salvation in 2 Corinthians 1. Verses 5 and 6, St. Paul says, quote, for as Christ's sufferings overflow to us, so through Christ does our encouragement also overflow. If we are afflicted, it is for your encouragement and your salvation. If we are encouraged, it is for your encouragement, which enables you to endure the same sufferings that we suffer. In other words... What does St. Paul just say? Christ's sufferings overflow to us. 